We're in lockdown at the moment, and the first thing I'd like to say is that I hope everyone and their family and friends are staying safe and keeping well during this very strange time. Seeing as we're unable to fish at the moment, it gives me a good opportunity to clean my fishing gear and give it a spring clean. I like to clean my rods and reels on a fairly regular basis anyway to keep them in tip-top condition, and there's no right or wrong way of going about it but uh, I'm going to show you in this video how I like to clean down my rods and reels. Now today we've got a really nice day weather-wise and normally during the winter months I'm in the kitchen cleaning down the rods and reels where it's a little bit warmer but seeing as we've got some good weather I've taken the rods and reels outside into the garden and I'm going to clean them down here. I'm going to talk you through some of the items that I use for cleaning down rods and reels. I've got a bowl here of warm soapy water. I've just put a couple of drips of washing up liquid in there. Then I've got a J cloth. And for cleaning the really fiddly parts of rods, especially like small guides that you might find on drop shop rods, I've got some cotton buds and also some chenille pipe cleaner that really gets in and gets the dirt out. For drying off the rods, I've got a soft tea towel. Um, this is what I use on the blanks. And then for the cork, I've got some paper toweling and that will just give the cork a really nice finish. If you've got quite an old rod that needs a little bit more TLC and you want to sort of give it a nicer finish, what you can do is use some dashboard wipes. And the great thing about these is that they're available in a matte and gloss finish. So um, this is a, one of the Terminator rods that I'm going to be cleaning to start with. And I've got some matte dashboard wipes. So I'm going to go over the rod just to give it a nice finish at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is break the rod down. I'm actually going to start by cleaning the butt section of the rod. So I'll just put the tip section down here. I'm going to get the J cloth, get it in the water, make it nice and wet, and then I'm just going to lightly soak the rod. Making sure it's all really damp. <clears throat> On some areas, like the cork and the EVA foam, I like to rub the J cloth a little bit harder just to get some of that dirt off. And make sure you get inside like the tiny little crevices where dirt might hold up as well. So this could be at the butt of the rod right at the end. It could be under the reel handle, reel seat. Also I like to wind the top part of the reel seat off and making sure I get inside the thread that you adjust the tightness of the, the reel seat with. For the guides on the butt section, normally they're big enough to just sort of work around with a J cloth and get dirt off. But when I move on to the tip section, what I'll do is I'll pick up the cotton bud or the pipe cleaner and use that to get into the really small guides. So now I've given that a bit of a wash. I'll just get the hose and just rinse off that soapy water. Put that back there and then I'll get my soft tea towel and just almost like chamois the rod I just put the section down here so I'm going to tear off a piece of paper towel in. just go over it very lightly and this can sometimes bring up the cork even better so 
I mean, there's not actually that much dirt that's coming off there because I've got most of it off by using the J-cloth, but I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a little bit of dirt showing up. And by just lightly going over the cork, it's gonna give it an even better finish. So, get my J-cloth. And I'll give the blank a good soaking, making sure that I go around all the guides. When I go around the, the tiny guides at the top end, it's more about just keeping them wet because we're gonna get the, the worst of the dirt off with the cotton buds and the pipe cleaner. And then just lightly go over the blank. Again, not rubbing too hard, just in case there is any grit on the blank. Again, we don't wanna scratch the rod. Now I'm gonna pick up cotton bud, just give that a little bit of a, a soaking and then I'll just get one of the ends and concentrate first on the ceramic insert inside the guide, just very lightly cleaning around it, also going inside all the little gaps and crevices make up each part of the guide especially this side of the guide too that's often a place where you can get a build up of dirt now the guides are getting smaller and smaller so I'm going to move on to the pipe cleaner which is really nice for getting inside some of these tiny little guides This is a, a linear light spin, so uh, it's a seven foot rod, it casts seven to 21 grams and it's probably one of my most used rods, it's such a good all rounder. And this rod is actually a few years old now, but by keeping it really nice and clean, it definitely prolongs the life of the rod. And I mean, once this is all finished, it's gonna look almost brand new. Another great tool you can use for cleaning the tiny guides you find on really light rods, especially drop shot and LRF rods, are incidental toothbrushes. They come in a variety of different sizes and they're perfect for breaking up any dirt that builds up in between these tiny little guides. Now I've finished that, I'll just quickly go over the rod again with the J cloth, because what I would have done is broken up any little bits of dirt that have got stuck inside. Get a hose and wash the soapy water off. And now I can pick up the soft tea towel. dry it off. Now that I've cleaned both sections of the rod, what I'm going to do is pick out one of these dashboard wipes and then very lightly just wipe over the rod. Sometimes when you take a new wipe out of the pack they can be quite wet so Sometimes just make sure you can give them a bit of a shake out, give them a little bit of a dry. Get into every little part. Just finish off the tip section. Now that I've finished cleaning the rod, what I'll do is that I'll leave each section to dry for 15 or 20 minutes or so, and then I'll put the sections back together. What I like to do is that I have the rod set up and ready to go for when I head out fishing. What I will do though, during the time that I'm waiting for them to dry, is that I'll quickly inspect the blank, 
and check for any new scratches. Thankfully, I've kept this rod in pretty good nick, so there's nothing new showing up on here. But the most important thing to check is the ceramic inserts that sit inside your guides. Because if there's any damage on these, whether that's little grooves or nicks, what it can do is damage the braid. Now normally, if it's going to happen on any ring or guide, it will be the tip guide. So I'm just going to check and pay attention to any little bits of damage that might be sitting inside each guide. It's all looking pretty good so far. Check every single guide, especially the tip ring. Oh, that looks all really good. So that rod is now nice and clean. I'm not sure if the camera's going to focus, but this rod's two or three years old now, and you can see, I mean, the, the cork is, is still in really good nick. Um, the rod's nice and clean. It almost looks brand new. By keeping it nice and clean and, and cleaning it fairly regularly, not only am I able to keep an eye out for any damage on the rod, so for example, the ceramic inserts that might damage the braid when you cast out and retrieve, but it's also really nice to be fishing with clean and good looking fishing equipment as well. So I recommend if, you, if you've got any spare time to definitely give your rods a clean. If you have a little setup like this, uh, I've got everything I need in front of me uh, and I've got a couple of other rods here that I'm about to clean in the minute too. Um, you can actually rattle through quite a few rods in a, a relatively short space of time. So yeah, if you've got any spare time, uh, I definitely recommend giving your fishing rods a clean.